<clears throat> Okie doke. Hi, everybody. This is Nadine Gilkison. Um, if you don't remember, I'm the district tech in Franklin Township. And today I'm excited because I have a special guest. Kyle Klein is with us. Hi, Kyle. Hello. <laughs> So uh, Kyle is going to be talking to us today about different ways to ramp up your math e-learning options. So um, I'm really happy that he was able to join us today. He's going to go through lots of different ideas. Um, Kyle, do you want to go ahead and give us a little bit more background about you? Um, sure. I am in my fifth year at Delphi Community Schools as the K-12 uh, Math Curriculum and Technology Integration Specialist. So it's a real fancy title for math coach and tech coach. Um, previously, I taught in the secondary classroom, math classroom for 13 years, um, taught everything from pre-algebra on up to pre-calculus. Um, I did teach seventh and eighth grade math for a semester also um, back in the day. That was a long time ago. <laughs> um, but I've really enjoyed my really enjoyed my current role because I, I still get to do that math piece, but then I also get to throw the technology piece in there as well. So um, this past month, a lot of people are have been reaching out quite a bit, and I've really enjoyed it. I kind of feel validated a little bit, you know, sometimes with your position. So it's been great. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know how that goes, too. Um, mm. And just on a side note, uh, Kyle has also done a tech coach swap with me. My background mm -hmm. is more in elementary, but in my role, I help out our secondary teachers as well. And so I was wanting our secondary teachers to get that math expertise. And since I knew that Kyle had that as his background, um, I reached out and asked if he could actually come down to Franklin Township and do some PD. And then I've also gone up to Delphi to do some PD mm -hmm. for them. So I think what's good about that is that you don't need to be the expert in everything. You know, lean on um, other people's expertise and how you can help them out. Exactly. I, I, I totally agree with that because um, that's another thing that's been really nice. Um, last week, you know, for or every Wednesday, we have a professional development at Delphi um, through the school, school year and then also during this uh, remote learning time. too. So last week, um, it was wonderful because I was able to have you as our guest uh, <laughs> virtually. And so you didn't have to make like an hour and 20 minute drive up to Delphi uh, and on the way back. So um, it was wonderful to have guests like that. We're, we're also going to have another guest this week. So um, it's, it's been kind of nice to have this different uh, virtual expertise be pulled in. Nice. Well, um, I'm going to let you start uh, sharing your screen and we'll get to it because we have lots of things to share. All right. So the first thing I'm actually going to share is this pull up. All right. Yep. Okay. So um, one of the things I've done in the past is I helped the Indiana Department of Education with their math framework. And basically what the math framework is, if you're not real familiar, um, you can go to the, to the uh, mathematics page here in the Department of Education at the very top they have a banner so you can click on this and basically this is kind of taking your standards breaking it down into giving some I can statements but also breaking it down to giving some resources uh, some examples but then also some digital resources as well so I want to scroll down a little bit they have a video at the top kind of explaining it a little bit I'm going to go into the high school here and I'm going to choose uh, we'll do algebra one and I'm going to click apply. And so what this does is this will pull up the algebra one standards down below and you can break it down further if you want with a description, but I'm going to go into something we've been talking about quite a bit recently is our quadratics. Um, there's multiple pages here. Let's see if I can find the quadratics one. Um, if, okay, here we go. So here we're talking about, um, graphing exponential and quadratic equations. So I can click on this standard. This will take me to a page that will give me the standard written out, the I can statement. So this is nice where uh, you can be a little more specific with the standard because the standard is really broad. So you can break this down more into your I can statements, your vocabulary, so it's good to use the proper vocabulary with the teachers. Looking back, so where students have learned a little, a few of their prerequisites, and then looking ahead, you know, where are they going to use exponential functions? Where are they going to use quadratic functions? And then there are some clarifying examples. So there's a little click here option, so we can open this tab. <clears throat> 
And here we go with a couple examples. Uh, these are what the uh, teachers that were working on the framework, what we felt were the really important, like the big ideas of the standard. And we have some digital resources here. So we have Desmos activity, um, illustrated mathematics task, a couple of those. Here's a work cited. Um, and, and it's all nice and in one Google Doc, like one page of Google Doc. We want to make sure that everything was, you know, not just inundating with you with a ton of resources. We know there's a ton more resources that are out there, but I thought if we gave you um, some of the best ones that we could find at the point, you know, here's a good starting point for a lot of teachers. So that's kind of the math framework in a nutshell. Um, and Kyle, does that go like kindergarten through high school? Is it totally complete? Yeah, I believe it is now because this is about two years ago we were working on this. So okay. um, they do have the standards have changed just a little bit. Um, previous standards we were working on were from 2014. These are the new 2020 standards, which said they're going to be available on the 15th or the updated framework is. The standards are already available. Um, if you go back to the original um, old math page here. Let me get back to it. And oh, that's where I wanted to go, actually. <clears throat> um, they have the new standards. And so the standards I've looked at so far, I haven't looked at all of them yet. But when I look at the Algebra 1 standards, um, it says, you know, right here, they were updated in March of 2020. So if you click on the PDF, it has all the standards here. They look, all the standards look to be the same. It's just how they're laid out are a little different. So the tables are different, basically, uh, and the fonts a little different. But other than that, I feel like most of the standards are the same. Don't quote me that they are all exactly the same, though. So um, that's something to look at here, probably for the teachers in the next uh, few weeks when you get really bored. We don't have to do lessons. And I wanted to point out here, um, Alex Hutton is actually from uh, my school district, so he's a math teacher at our high school. And so I wanted to let you see the comment. Um, that he added in here. So yeah, there are actual uh, teachers that help to put together those examples oh. for you guys. Sure. All right. Um, okay. Well, so that's that's a math framework. Um, I'm going to go into, I have a link that, let's see, I think I can actually add this to my, to the, uh, I copy this and add it to the stream. Um, can I add that? Oh, maybe not. I think I have to. I think you have to add it maybe to the stream. What is but, it that you mean? Uh, the I, add, I gave it to you in the private chat. It's the you did. I'll add it in there. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So this is. Uh, I just found this somewhere. It's a Google sheet of all kinds of rich math tasks, and so this is kind of like the math teachers. Uh, you might want to call it like their Bible or something. So because there are links to everything. Um, every grade level, every topic, you can find it in this sheet. And there's there's so many great resources that have been curated on this sheet that this is kind of my go-to whenever I'm trying to find something that if I if I can't find it in one of my normal websites, and this is where I definitely go and check next. So we have like Math Shell here, the Mathematics Assessment Project, Mathalicious. Um, we have three act math tasks from. Uh, Graham Fletchy, and then also from Dan Meyer, which we'll get into. Uh, there's, you know, there's uh, Estimation 180, there's Achieve the Core, there's just a ton of great resources that are on. So I highly recommend that everybody takes a look at that at some point. Um, and, and you might just find something new that you're like, oh, I didn't know this was here. Or you might have seen it somewhere else at a conference and be like, oh, I forgot about this. So maybe I can add that in here. So um, I'm actually going to go to uh, Dan Meyer's three act math tasks. And this links to his spreadsheet that, that he has uh, has broken down. So he does have it by common core standards, but uh, and some of the math process standards, which is helpful. So and one that, yeah. um, that you may want to add also in the chat. If even okay. if you want to send it to me um, in the private sure. chat, I'm sure they would want to see that spreadsheet as well. Sure. And I'm excited. We have like several people here from Arkansas, from a school district in Arkansas. So, oh, and, wow. yeah. And so I wanted to let you guys know, um, those of you that are, 
I know whenever he pulled up, you know, for the Indiana resources, you guys can still take advantage of those resources, even if you're not from Indiana. So that's Correct. Totally fine. I wanted to make sure that you all know that. Yeah, very similar to what we're doing here, because I mean, Dan has a bunch of his stuff linked to Common Core standards, which are similar to Indiana, but they're not the exact same necessarily. So um, he does have, you know, this is three-act math. So basically what you do with three-act math is you really want to hook the kids and you want to give them like a, a small snippet of, of something and then you want to get them thinking. And, and it doesn't have to be necessarily like start with math thinking, but it can give them an idea of just thinking about, okay, what did you just see? Was it an image? Was it a, um, you know, was it a, a video? Let's see if I can find my favorites here. Um, he has one that I've used for math with quadratics where um, does it, or will it go in? And to find it here. I should have had this one already pulled. Oh, here we go. Will it hit the hoop? So I'm gonna click on this one. And let's see, oh, of course it's gonna pull up a, a zip file. While we're waiting on that pull up, um, he has other people's three act math tasks on another tab. So this is pretty handy over here. So he doesn't have a ton, but if you know who Brian Marks is, he does yummymath.com. Hmm. And that's a, uh, it's more like a kind of a worksheet base, but he does have like for the free version, but he does have some just great uh, questions and um, resources there as well. Um, okay, this is gonna take forever to get my, the will it hit the hoop? So I'm gonna stop that for a moment. Um, but let's see. Let me go back over here. I can't remember which one we looked at the other day, but <clears throat> it was nice because it, it showed, um, I'll just talk about the will it hit the hoop. Uh, he shoots a basketball and then it stops, like the basketball stops at the very top and throughout uh, at the top of its apex. And so basically what the question is to the kids is, will, will the basketball go in through, or will the basketball go through the hoop? So you have the kids, you know, first give them like, what do you wonder? You know, what, what, what's something that you wonder from this? And some kids will ask, you know, well, is he going to make the basket? Some kids will be like, um, what kind of shoes is he wearing? <laughs> or they'll be like, uh, where is he at? Because it looks really sunny. And so, you know, it's kind of a great way just to get kids engaged in the activity and to the discussion of it. So then what you do is after that, you introduce a little bit of the math. And you say, well, this is called a parabola. And it's from quadratic equations that we can use. Um, and, and so it's a, uh, and so you just start that conversation, but you get the kids hooked in. And then finally, the third act is where you reveal what happens. So you show the whole video of him making the entire, uh, of making the basket. Um, this has been turned into a, oh, a Desmos activity, which is one of my favorites here. Um, so actually I'm switching, I'm, so I'm switching over because actually I think it is in Desmos. So, um, <clears throat> I love, I love that spreadsheet and on that spreadsheet, one of the best math resources I, I know about is Desmos. And so uh, Desmos is one of those that, you, it was just a graphing calculator for the longest time, but now what it is is it's, it actually has activities built in. So uh, if you go to teacher.desmos.com on your, on your device, you can go to another tab. You can search for different activities. Um, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to quadratics. Um, hey Kyle, I wanted to ask, yeah. um, so Alex was asking on the chat, it says for some reason when he opened up the Google Sheet, it says uh -huh. making a copy or saving is not an option. Um, oh, so what I did was I just went up to the top and I just bookmarked, um, I just bookmarked that, uh, Oh, I hit the little star up in my, uh, I bookmarked it is what I did. So I couldn't say the sheet. He's correct. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay. You're gonna have to add my screen back on. Sorry. <laughs> I, just, okay. I just went out of it. <laughs> oh, there right, I took you back off. <laughs> there there you go. we go. Okay. We on? Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So let me go into quadratics here and there should be, there it is. Will it hit the hoop? So this is, I'm going to show you the video. Uh, basically, what they've done with Desmos is created this activity where they took the three-act math and put it all together um, in a nice slide format for the kids to go along and try it out. So 
as a teacher, you would sign in with your Google account um, or you can just sign in with any email. And then I went to Will It Hit The Who? It gives you a little description of what we're looking at. And then some other options or other bundles it's like it's similar to. For the teacher, you have to create a class code. So you just click on this green button. This is a code that you would give to your students. So I'm actually going to go into the dashboard. And when you open it up, um, let's see here. Gonna take a moment. When you open it up, it's going to have the different screens across the top of the different slides that you would follow. It also has where the students go. So the students would go to student.desmos.com and they would type in this code. Caps doesn't really matter. They would type in this code. The other thing you can do is you can also take this link, copy and paste it over into Canvas into Google Classroom, and that will send the kids directly there where you don't have to share the code. And I also um, know, because um, in our district, we use Google <clears throat> Classroom and Canvas, and uh, there's an integration with Canvas if it's something that you're using. So oh, with the AppUI integration that you can add Desmos, just so you guys know. Now, is that just a graphing calculator, or is that the entire activity? Full. Yeah, I think the full activity. Awesome. So then it, instead of going outside, then it's just all embedded on the slide or on the page in Canvas. Oh, that's fantastic. That's awesome. Um, okay, so once your kids start logging in, you'll see their names over here on the side. They'll start populating. Uh, you can anonymize them if you want to. Uh, you can uh, leave them up there. Uh, we actually did one for remote learning last week, and it, I was able to see uh, as the kids were, as they were completing the different slides, there's little dots, and I'll pull that up here in a moment. Um, but if I want to see what the slides look like as a, as a student, I can click here. I can go to student up on top right. And I can see, I can preview it as a student. So here it says like, you know, create the line that's best fit. Um, let me see if I can just hide that. Here we go. Um, create, drag the black points to create a line that models the blue line. So this is just a, you know, a interactive slide here. So I'm gonna choose this and then I hit next and it gives a little information. So here, now the problem is it gives you an image of what it looks like shooting a basketball. So we put that real world piece into it. Um, a line is not really gonna work out as well. So, um, because that basketball is not gonna keep going up this line, it's eventually gonna start coming back down. And so you have a question here, we can keep going through, let's see if I can find the video. Um, of it because I think oh here's the prediction so here's here's the video I was talking about earlier and stop and so this is really neat because it starts catching the kids on well do you think it's going to go in or do you think it's not going to go in so they choose their answer as they choose their answer and submit all of this comes to the teacher to the teacher dashboard so the teacher will see okay how many kids chose will it go in how many chose will it uh, go out and so there's just a lot of uh, there's a lot of great feedback that the teacher can give through Desmos as well. Um, they did add the option to add a co-teacher now. So um, I was working with an eighth grade teacher on this last week. So let me pull up that activity real quick. But I can or she can assign a button. I can also see what the students are responding with. Let me see if I can pull this up here. Um, this is just one of my favorites because I can, we can do this with so 20 students. So we can do this um, while you're in class or while you are at home. So there's a ton of great options here uh, with Desmos. So, all right, when I anonymize these names, here we go. So when you anonymize the names, um, it shows here uh, famous mathematicians is what it does, but you can always, un you know, get their names back so you can see who completed it. Uh, looks like I have one person that's doing an assignment from last week right here. So that's good info to know because after we get off this, get off here, I can find out who Gottlob Freak is and tell him <laughs> why, why he complete it last week. Um, <laughs> all these dots are where you can see you know, that they answered it. Um, anything that's grayed out, they did not finish the activity. So that's great, quick, 
notice a notification for the teachers. If I was to go up to click on this option, now I can see all of the kids' graphs on one screen. I can actually click on, if I'm in an overlay, these all should be the same graphs, but I can zoom in. Um, somebody has a line, so I really need to, as a teacher, I really need to talk to that student about who drew the line instead of a parabola. Um, I can go even a little bit closer into each individual student, and I can see you know, what they worked on. So in this case, they don't have the factor form down here. I can give them a little comment and say, hey, you need to, um, you need to add your factored form here on slide four, so, or on slide two. So as a teacher, there's a lot of things you can do as you go through this, um, and you can you know, talk to the students. I gave a bunch of feedback, and then they were able to give me some feedback. That's also a new option on Desmos. There's just a, a lot of cool things that you can do here um, through Desmos. Um, since I know that we have some elementary uh, that are in here as well, um, mm -hmm. I know Desmos is, is geared, I'm trying to say, what what's the lowest grade level that Desmos is good for? They're always adding more stuff, but honestly, it's probably geared more towards secondary. Okay. Um, because it's not as much. We highlight some elementary stuff too, since we've got oh, both, yeah. both realms. Oh, yeah, definitely. So um, actually, I, I think elementary will love this next option um, called uh, Estimysteries. Mysteries. So it's by Steve Wyburnie. Uh, let me put this, let me send you this link here also. So Steve Wyburnie has this, um, his own blog that he goes in and he will, um, he gives like these uh, Google Slides options or PowerPoints and I'm gonna choose one here. Um, it goes through and talks about different things. So here's here's a bunch for grades K, one and two. Here's some for grades one through three, three through eight. So I'm actually gonna go here to um, pull this up. And let's see. Get rid of that, get rid of that. Get rid of some tabs so it might run a little faster. Um, it pulls up, it opens up in a PowerPoint, but then I always just convert it, save it as a Google slide since we're a Google district. And then all of the, uh, all of the animations work a little bit more fluid. So I'll show you what estimates are. Basically it gives the students an image and they have to kind of estimate um, a number. You know, so in this case, we're gonna have dominoes that are in a, uh, in a glass. And what but was each slide again? I'm sorry. And what was the name of the website again? So I at, I sent it to you in the private chat. Oh, you did. <laughs> it, yeah, it's a uh, it's stevewyburnie.com, and then you just have to search for Estimate Mysteries. Okay. But he also does neat stuff with Splat Math on there, so definitely check him out. Um, and definitely follow him on Twitter as well. Okay. So okay, so I'm gonna pull this up. And I'm just going to present it because as a teacher, you would present this on your screen um, to the students. And then you just have them kind of silently think to themselves. Or you can also, after they come up with a guess, you need to have them do a little turn and talk. Well, okay, what's your number? What do you choose that? But then also in the lower grades, give them a, a little strip of like a 100s chart. Or if you're in the really low grades, maybe a 20s chart or a 50s chart. And then they can mark out these different numbers, and you'll see why here in a moment. So, okay, so we have this image of all these dominoes in this glass. And the question is, how many dominoes are in the glass? So what the students have to do is they have to write down a little estimation on a piece of scrap paper or another paper if you want to follow along and have them, you know, explain their reasoning. Um, I like to do it just the first couple of times without having them explain on paper, but have them write down, uh, or have them just start talking to us as a, um, as a group. So in this case, they're gonna have four clues. So if I click on my, if I do the animation for the first clue, you see that they give us a 50s chart as we go through here. So the first clue is, the answer is between 20 and 50. So what the students should do is they should mark out on their chart everything one through 20. 20, and then 
it says between 50, so you kind of get in that conversation. Well, should you mark out the 50 or should you not? You know, should you mark out the 20? Or should you not mark out the 20? Um, the next step, when you click on your animation, it actually does mark out the 20 and the 50. So it's a great question is, okay, the answer is the 20, but it does not include that. So you get into some math conversations there. Uh, we get a clue two, and it says the answer is an even number. So everything that's shaded out on their hundreds chart, they should mark out everything that is an even number. So the teacher walks around, make sure the students understand the difference between an even and an odd number. So then it should look like this. And then ha after each clue, have the students write down another guess. And if, if they want to, if they want to change their guess, it's funny because after each clue, you'll hear some kids be like, oh, or you're like, yes, I'm still in it. Or my first guess might still be right. <laughs> So it's fun. I love listening to the to the uh, to the students' reactions. Um, I love even more listening to the teachers' reactions because I did this for a PD with our teachers, and they, oh my gosh, they wanted to play another one after it. They were so in into it. Um, yeah, okay, slides are already all prepared. That's really cool. Yes, and I mean it's wonderful. I converted all the powerpoints to slides and then shared the folder to my teachers, so they appreciated that. They didn't have to work on that too much. Um, so clues. The answer does not have a four in the tens place. So that means we get to mark out everything that is a 40s. So now we're done with this. So then we ask the kids, well, do you still have this? You want to keep your same guess or does it change? Then we go to the last clue. And this is the answer does have a four in the ones place. So that should bring us down to 24 and 34. So if anybody has a 24 or 34, still that is fantastic we'll see if you are correct we finally get to narrowing down these last two numbers and you get the reveal and you get the big yeses or the no's there are 34 dominoes so i love doing s mysteries as a uh I know it's great for you know beginning class end of class to wrap up something this can be done in any uh grade level and basically the difference is like this same activity can be done with students in middle school you're just changing the clues is what you're doing so i, I love esta mysteries um they can kind of use really anywhere so like you know if i have a uh like a middle school and see if i can go back and find a middle school one so you can kind of see the difference in the clues um if you do this with your students a few times then what I recommend is see if you know give them a template and see if they can create their own, which is really neat. It's kind of really taking it to that next level. Uh, I think the prism challenge is a new one. <clears throat> so I, uh, if I was if I had my own class, I probably would have done this as one of my activities. I had them like give them like an image, or have them create not give them an image, but give them a template and had them create their own estimate mystery, and we would have tested out the different ones for the classes. So um, I'm put up there, uh, Daniel Rigsby is uh, in our district. Hi, Daniel. Mm -hmm. um, she put out there that this would be really fun to do on a Zoom call with. Oh, she thought that would be really cool. That is fun where you can show it to the whole group and then they could write down on a piece of paper or a whiteboard at home and then show their answers. I love that. Yeah. Um, and I also like, you know, Alex just added in here to, um, that this is a good time for teachers to learn and grow. You know, there a lot of them are putting on here that, you know, they love the fact that they're learning about math sites <clears throat> they haven't heard of. And that's what the whole mm -hmm. point of this is. I'm excited. And I'm excited that right. we have people, you know, outside of my district, outside of Indiana in here mm -hmm. as well too. So right. that's the whole reason I'm doing this live because I'm trying to help out as many people as we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, and that's why I've been telling my teachers too. I'm like, you know, we. For, especially for as long as we're doing, we can't just keep posting uh, PDFs or worksheets on, on Google Classroom. We got to find something. And you know what? It, now is the best time of all to really try something, find something and try something new because in a lot of districts, um, the either the fourth quarter of grades are not, um, they're not the same as the other three quarters throughout the year. And so, you know, they could be weighed differently. There's not as many grades um, you you do it differently and so now is the best time to really try out something new and just see how it goes and you know you're doing it virtually maybe it's something that you're like oh, I really like this I can't wait to get back in the classroom in the fall and try it with the students in the classroom 
Cool. So I, I do love the idea with the Zoom. That's a great idea. Or Meet, if you use Google Meet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> any any platform. Anything you're doing. Yeah. Uh, do you already have, do you already have pulled up the uh, estimation 180? I you do. Right, pulled up. I thought that yeah, might be a good go. way. Yeah, I mean, anytime you know, with math, the hardest thing is really to just hook hook kids in, and um, you know, it's if you even if you have up on the board, hey, here's our standard we're going over together, or students will be able to. Um, solve linear equations, and they're like, "What does that even mean?" <laughs> and, uh, but some will say, and then some will be like, "Groans." Well, what about starting your class with an image, <clears throat> and you just start getting the kids thinking right away? So I'm going to pull up one here. Oh, actually, I should have done that one instead. Um, <laughs> let me go back. I like that one better. Let me go back. Um, a lot of these are, and they're just images that people have made around their house and I actually made one um, where I use like we have two different uh, measuring cups two different kinds of measuring cups at home and I filled them up uh, with the exact like they reached like African water or something like that and took a picture and I shared it and I'm like, which one has and but I covered up the measurements and so I'm like which one has uh, which one has more water and one like a smaller wider uh, measuring cup and one was like a skinnier taller one and so they each had the exact same amount but it was great to get the conversations going with the students and they're like well this one is it's taller it's higher it's got to have more water and um, at the end you know, we kind of said well actually they're all the same so um, but it's just kind of the like different questions you can come up with. so in this case it's how many small vases will it take to fill the larger vase so these vases are the same or vod if you want to go if you want to go uh, for chair, uh, vase, if you want to, how many of these can you fit into the larger one? And so you can have the kids just throw a guess down, but someone will guess, oh, like 500. And then it's like, oh, maybe one. And so they, they're choosing numbers that are not really, you know, in, as close to what they're guessing. So you can always throw something out. I'm like, okay, if somebody guesses the exact number, then you get bonus point or next quiz or you get a candy bar piece of candy or um if you're within you know so so far but so what uh andrew stadels are doing was getting a what's a guess that's too low and what's a guess that's too high um then and trying to narrow that gap you know trying to get them to think of like a think of a number line of what's a number that's too high over here and what's a number that's too low over here we want to get that gap narrowed a little bit so trying to get them to work with the numbers a little bit more um, they have an estimate and then they have to put a reasoning. So this is a way to really just get the kids thinking about math. It could either be, um, you, and it can really be used in all K through 12 because estimation is something that we use as an adult. It's not just something, um, like factoring that we learned in algebra one that you're like, when am I ever going to use this again? And so, um, I love using estimation in any, any grade level. It's, it's really a lot of fun. So, cool. Oh, hi. This is my daughter Cody. She decided to join here, I guess. So well, we um, then here we need to show her. There she is. Hi. Yeah. Oh, there she is. Yes. So can you say <laughs> hi. You don't know you're on T you don't know you're on YouTube, but you are. <laughs> <She's gonna be laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, um, you learning done for today? Pull up yeah. um, the which one doesn't belong. I like that site too. Oh yes. Uh, oh, did I accidentally I did close that up. All right, yeah, which one doesn't belong could be my favorite. Uh, it's wodb.ca is what it is. Um, or you can always Google it, which one doesn't belong math. And this has um, one one image, but there's like four different images in it. In a, like, well, it looks like it would be a quadrant plane. So I want to start with shapes. This is my favorite. And so what you can do is... You can take this image, post it into Canvas or into Schoology, Google Classroom, where you, and have the kids choose which of these images doesn't belong. So if I just choose this one here in the middle, um, we'll see. Actually, I can't see the chat, but if anybody wants to throw into the chat and just say which one doesn't belong and why, the, the uh, let's see how I want to say that. Um, 
I'm not, I'm not going to chop that up, so I'm not going to say that right. <laughs> um, <laughs> the proof is in the pudding. That's what I was going to try to say. Um, it's, it's like you can choose any of these options, but what we're really looking for is the explanation behind the students, um, their words. So I don't know. Did anybody, anybody put anything in the chat? I haven't Maybe. seen anything yet. Okay. I might be okay. about it right now. <clears throat> might be on delay. Yeah. So, um, but that's okay. So, all right. Well, if we were to choose, oh, I, which went to a different one. What the heck happened? Um, some students may choose, you know, the top right because it's shaded in. Right? Some students may choose the bottom right because it has five sides or it has five angles. It has five corners. Um, somebody may choose the top left because all the sides are not the same length. Uh, yeah, we've got people others. giving in answers right now that they're saying the Pentagon because the other three are quadrilaterals. Mm -hmm. uh, Pentagon. Um, yeah, that seems to be the popular. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and some people choose this because it the flat surface is not on, you know, on the bottom. It, it can't lay flat on the ground or something. Um, and so there's a whole bunch of different images where you're just getting students talking about these were uh, about these images. There's and they even have uh, words in here. They have um, you know tiled shapes. We, we're talking about money. So if you're talking with your students, okay, which one of these coins? You know, which one of these shapes of the coins don't work? We got twenty five pennies here, and we have a quarter. You know, we have five nickels, but then we have five dimes. And so these are just wonderful conversation pieces you have with the students. I actually put this one out on my. Um, and pull the numbers up. I put this out on my sidewalk last week. I need to do another one this week. I put this one out on my sidewalk with sidewalk chalk because my kids have a ton of sidewalk chalk. And so, um, and then I posted it on Instagram and Facebook and that might be the most um, <laughs> commented Facebook post I've had in a while. So uh, I had neighbors that, you know, and other people are just friends that were choosing which number and why and they were given different reasons. And so I was giving them feedback. Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. Um, and it was fun. I had adults, you know, adults were doing it. So it, it hooks people in. Um, yeah. And that's what I love about it. Um, the other thing too is um, I think it'd be cool to ask the kids to make one. Ah, uh, yes. That you're doing. I thought, you know, that would be a, <laughs> be a really great e learning assignment, you know, if somebody was trying to think of a different option for now. Just like right. you said, use sidewalk chalk um, or. Hey if the teacher's doing it on a Zoom chat or something like that. So um, they have this incomplete sets tab that you can go to. And there you have some images that you can choose and you can even use these if you want um, with numbers. Uh, I actually made a, <clears throat> oh, like a collaborative Google Slides where each student had put their name and they had this graph right here. And they had to use uh, Desmos to create a fourth graph that they thought didn't belong with the other three. And then they had to write their description, they had to write their reasoning in their slide also. And so that was that was a fun activity I did with some students. And and it it really opened it up because they had some graphs that they created over here that I had I didn't even think about. And so it's amazing when you give the students those options, some of the things that they come up with. <clears throat> I love that. Yeah, which one doesn't belong as a it's a, it's a strong go-to for me. I love it. I was trying to remember what was the other one that, Oh, the would you rather, would you rather math.com? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a great one. Yeah. So you're comparing, um, like there's one image. So there's usually two images. One of them I know has a, a pool, two different pools. And one says, this is so many meters by so many meters, so many meters. Um, this is so many, uh, centimeters by so many centimeters by so many meters centimeters which one would hold the most uh water and why and so the kids actually have to do a little bit of math and then do their reading behind it <clears throat> yeah so it's ends up being uh yeah would you rather math is another great website as well i think that's on my favorite places tab here somewhere uh, yeah, would you yeah, would you rather? It's down here on the bottom. <clears throat> right below which one doesn't belong. So <laughs> cool. Yeah, so definitely that resource that you shared out, that's gonna be great. Um mm -hmm. and I noticed in the 
in the chat, um, our district math coach is actually watching this too. So that'll be a great reason <clears throat> um, for us to okay. take a look at. Cool. Sure. Um, do you want me to share like one of the hyperdocs? Yes. Kind of we, hadn't, we hadn't even burst into okay. that. <clears throat> yeah, um, Kyle knows that I like to use hyperdocs a lot um, in our district and with instruction. And I got excited because Kyle has started to take the concept of hyperdocs and apply it to math. And he's started to create some secondary math ones. I mean, even if you're elementary, I think being able to see how this could be packaged for <clears throat> math, I think that would be really beneficial. So yeah, Kyle, if you have that, we'll go ahead and have you pull that up. Okay, um, you'll have to share my screen again on the bottom. There we, we go. go. Look at us, we're using on this now. I'm getting better, I'm getting better. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so this is, this is probably the most um, intense one I've done. I probably should have shown a different one, but um, yeah, uh, during this time, it's really uh, remote learning. It's given me some time to be creative and uh, finally do some of the stuff I really wanted to do instead of observations all the time. So, um, which is important, don't get me wrong, but um, I really kind of miss like the creation piece. So um, I think I've done like six, uh, I have to do another one this week, um, six mostly, mostly for algebra one, but I do have a seventh grade surface area one complete and a, uh, an AP stats one that I've done also, but most of these are for algebra one. Um, feel free to, you know, use these, share them, use them however you like. Um, this actually, I even, so I even gave Nadine uh, credit here for the template because uh, she, you know, has the nice templates on her website with the Engage Explorer, explain, apply. Um, I added a couple of different things, but this one is about graphing quadratic equations. So this is more of an algebra one standard, um, gets hit in algebra two as well. Basically, it kind of went through and, have you know a slide for each student and this is not let me preface this with um we do remote learning two days a week at delphi um and so like we just do tuesday thursday this is something that i could see the kids doing on either two or three days so these are not just like one day activities that are thrown in here um <clears throat> basically what these are are just prepackaged. uh kind of like a, a framework of how I want the students to go through learning about how to graph quadratics. So, oh, I should have just showed this at the beginning because here's the little video of um, Dan Meyer shooting the, uh, shooting the hoop. I should have done that at the beginning, right? <clears throat> um, so here's the, the video, they watch the video. The nice thing is they don't have to go outside of uh, Google Slides to watch this YouTube video. And then what they had to do is they actually had to click on this image. It's a, a poll everywhere. And if they click on that image to vote, they can actually see the results from their teammates or from their classmates as to whether if they click down here. Um, after more of them are voting, it's still live. So they can see if it's um, what's happening. You know, what are people guessing? So I actually even added a third option. I said, yes. I said, no, it'll be short or no, it'll be long. So I didn't just do the yes or no. I had them even... Uh, think a little bit more past that. So um, that was kind of my engage piece, but I wanted to really hook the kids with, okay, what's something that is, we're not just talking right about quadratics right away, what's something that they might think about and be like, oh, okay, that's kind of, kind of a good idea. Um, the next part would be the explore. So what students are gonna do here, you could give them some YouTube videos um, to, to uh, view. Here is just like an introduction to graphing parabolas, and this is where um, this is a link to their Des Desmos classroom activity. And so each teacher is going to have a different code. So if you were to use this, then you need to set up the code, and you would just say to the kids, "Okay, um, in Canvas, use this code here." Or I could click on student.desmos.com, and I could have that link that I showed earlier. Um, I can click on this link. This is a thing link that will go, and you can click on the different options. This will open up in another tab also. We can click on these different little uh, little dots and it'll talk about the different pieces of a parabola. So, so the kids are kind of learning a little bit of vocabulary here as well uh, with the thing link and over here with the Desmos and what they're doing is they're learning um, just about the different pieces and okay, what happens to the equation? What does it do to the parabolas? Cool. 
And the one thing that I'll mention, um, and this is the reason why I love HyperDocs so much, mm -hmm. is because all of these different sites and whatnot, you know, if you're wanting to package it all together, that's what makes HyperDocs so nice is that yes. it's a great way to integrate all of these different sites and the activities that you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. I had some people say that um, that's actually part of the reason why that they joined because they wanted to see, you know, this math HyperDoc um, connection um, and they have been following the templates that I have. So that's great. Cool. Um, if yeah, you want awesome. more of a breakdown about HyperDocs, there is another PD. Um, it's actually the one that I did for Kyle um, mm -hmm. last week. And so last night I uploaded that. So if you want like the whole intro to HyperDocs, there's another video that you can go out and watch and you can see that PD as well. Um, we have just a few more yeah. minutes and then we'll, um, and then we'll wrap things up. Sure. I'll have the next one at noon. <laughs> okay. Yep. So um, yeah, just a couple more minutes um, here. I have like an explain, but I also use the drag and drop features for, students that could take these pieces, you know, using the white space around the slide and they can take these uh, different um, items here and they can drag and drop onto different parts of the slide. Because then what's gonna happen is they're going to, um, I don't even know if that's right. Um, so they, um, I just threw it somewhere. Um, oh, it is right. Um, but then what they do is they submit this back to you and you can double check their work as well. So um, I like adding the little drag and drop pieces as well. So it doesn't always have to be just totally digital. Um, and then there's, you know, adding in a quizzes, but also where the kids have to complete this table on here, um, give them a little, you know, ideas on the right, how to do that. And then I love including Flipgrid as a reflect piece. So if they click on this image, it'll take them to a Flipgrid and they have to do a short little video just answering the questions. So, um, that's kind of it. And I, every once in a while I'll throw in some extensions if they want to learn a little bit more or play a little bit more as well. So um, I was trying to look for my, I have all my HyperDocs linked somewhere, kind of like you do. I'll, I'll send those and um, I'll, actually while you're finishing up, I'll, I'll send those to you so you can add them into the chat if people okay. want to look at them or not. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm very, very happy that we were able to have Kyle today. Like I said, you know, it really helps when you have someone who has the expertise in a certain area. Um, Cause I know so many times that my math teachers would come and ask me something. But again, since my background was just elementary, I would know about different websites, but if they wanted further integration ideas, I was always trying to reach out to people and say, Oh, well you used to teach this. So that really helps out a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure if you saw Fern's comment, but she said, thanks so much. Um, there were sure. you know, been a great wealth of knowledge and information. So Sure. And I mean, definitely don't hesitate to reach out to me um, on Twitter. I'm at Mr. Klein underscore ed tech. And then um, also, you know, email, you can email me. It just, it's like Klein K at Delphi.k12.in.us. Um, don't hesitate to reach out. You know, I'm always, always glad to kind of make this a little more exciting and, um, you know, it, it's fun to make math exciting because it we get we get dogged a lot. So, <laughs> and all of the resources that Kyle shared out, um, it's not in the YouTube description yet because we're doing this live. But by the end of today, well, I'll actually have Ooh, on the description. Idea. It'll list all of these, so that way, if you're watching this later and the, and you're not live, it's okay. Um, we'll actually have everything in there for you guys. Okay. Sure. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, Kyle. Can't thank you. Sure. <laughs> Thanks sure. Well, it was exciting. Bye. You guys all have a great day. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.